Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have an art journal video for you, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I will be working in my hidden journaling art journal. I have moved all of my art journals to these A5 binders, and this particular journal has pages that all have an element that hides my journaling. Things that I have written down that I was feeling on the day I created that page. And today I wanted to create another page in this art journal. I have added some pages to this journal that I have cleaned off on, you know, it's a clean up or an experiment page. And that's where I have stuck them is in this hidden journaling journal so that I can have a, a not clean page to start with. I will be using this page that has a little bit of texture paste script. This was a cleanup from another project where I had colored my texture paste with ink and pushed it through the Crafters Workshop Art Is stencil. And I am going to add it with this Distress Oxide Spray. Now these oxide sprays are new to my craft room. I don't have many sprays. I don't love them. I get them everywhere. My hands were yellow for like two days after this. <laughs> But I wanted to try them out. I've seen other videos and they're kind of looking fabulous, so why not? This particular color is Wild Honey, and I am spraying both close and far away to experiment and see what the difference is. And the closer I get, the farther, the, the more intense the radial spray is. Once I have this sprayed off, I am going to heat it with my heat gun until it is dry front and back, and then I want to add some black ink splatters. And I just reached into my desk and pulled out this um, Altenew Jet Black Ink Cube. It was the first one, so hey, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I will add some water to that with my spray bottle and pick that up with a paintbrush and just flick it onto my page. And that just kind of um, mirrors the spray from the oxide sprays. Now I have seen a lot of people working with these oxide sprays where they add water, but I'm just was curious to see what would happen. It's the first play with them. So for my next step, I want to take this little piece of gauze and color it. Um, I'm going to wet it down first by spraying some water into that bowl and soaking the water up with the gauze. And then I'm going to add some distress paints. These are just acrylic paints and it was the closest thing to me. Um, I'm adding a red, I think it's barn door. And then I want to, um, brown it up a little bit, get it a little bit more like a rust color. So I will add some gathered twig to it in just a moment. And I'm just mixing that up with my paintbrush. Um, yeah, um, gathered twigs is the brown color I'm adding to make it kind of more of a, a rusty red than a red red. I just kind of am playing with a color palette. I'm going with some yellow, some reds, and some greens, kind of a um, nature-esque palette. <laughs> now that the gauze has soaked up most of this um, ink, I will pull it out of the dish with my reverse clamp tweezers and attempt to dry it off. I am working on my Teflon craft mat so it can take the heat. Um, after I dried it for a bit, I pulled it apart to kind of dry it some more and my fingers were red on top of the yellow. So it was just kind of an inky, inky day. Um, and I will go ahead and finish drying that off. The gauze does kind of drink, sh sorry, shrink <laughs> and get stiff as it dries. And I want to add that right here to the middle of this page. It's just kind of another layer of texture and color that I am adding to my background. And I decided to try and adhere this with Tombow Mono Glue. And I chose this mostly because as the Tombow Mono Glue dries, it dries clear. So any places where the glue pokes through the gauze that isn't covered up by my focal image will be not really visible. Um, it wasn't the best solution <laughs> for gluing this down. In fact, in part of the edited out takes of this video, um, it did actually peel off and I had to put it back on. So um, it worked eventually. Let's put it that way. It worked eventually. Once I had the focal point down on top of the gauze and there was something more for the glue to stick to, like paper to paper instead of paper to gauze, it did stick down a lot better. <laughs> but this is just um, completely organic, non 
forced shape. For my focal image, I have picked this sloth. So this sloth and all of the foliage images that I have are from a Stamperia um, cutouts book. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have trimmed them all out fussy cutting, which is not my favorite thing to do, but I have done it for this art journal page. And I am now going to take my ar archival potting soil brown ink and ink up the edges of all of these cutouts because they are printed on white core paper. The really cool thing about the cutouts in these um, Stamperia books is that they are the same image front and back, it's just reversed. So I could use either side of that sloth depending on how it fit better on my page, especially because I have now inked up the white core edges and you cannot see that um, white core and you can't see the kind of less than perfect um, trimming out that I have done around these images. And um, some of these um, bamboo leaves and tree branches were a little bit um, delicate. We'll call it delicate. <laughs> and not only were they a little difficult to trim out, they were a little bit difficult to ink up. So I have sped this up really fast. I think this is like eight times. <laughs> so if this is eight times normal speed, imagine how slow I was really moving. It was slow. <laughs> But I, I like how it turned out. It was um, the green color I was looking for. I was kind of going for that mossy, more nature kind of green versus a bright or lime green. <clears throat> Sorry. My plan here is to stack these this foliage on top of my gauze sheet and have my sloth kind of hanging from the branch. Um, sloths are my second spirit animal because, you know, some days I move about that fast. And that one branch just would not stay on. It was delicate and tiny and falling apart, so I just ripped it off. Whatever, no biggie. <laughs> and I, my plan is to have these kind of bamboo-looking trees um, there for the sloth to be climbing up and then add these other green leaves kind of to the back or behind the sloth because he kind of sort of blends into that yellow background. You know, he's very um, neutral in color, very, very tan, very cream, and he stands out better against the green than he does against the yellow. So that's kind of how I'm going, it's going to look. And you can see that that gauze is already starting to kind of peel up. I am going to add a little bit of Tombow glue down the middle of this um, bamboo tree or bamboo piece. Um, I am not going to put it down behind all of the ends of the leaves, just kind of sorted down the middle of each leaf so that it will stick mostly, but still have some edges that um, lift up and move around a little bit. And this is where the gauze kind of stuck to the back of that image. And as I was trying to glue that down and hold it down in place, it stuck to my finger and then it pulled off the paper and I edited that out so you didn't have to watch me get mad at my art journal. <laughs> now that I have the gauze and the first part of my foliage in place, I will go ahead and add the rest. And believe it or not, this is also sped up a little bit, like I think it's two times normal speed. This page in general took me about, once I had the concept in mind and had all my images selected, the fussy cutting and the layout design was about an hour, all told. So not too bad. Not too bad at all. I've edited, edited it down to what, 20 minutes? So not bad at all. I am using my tweezers to kind of push those um, focal images down. Hopefully the glue will not stick to them the way it sticks to my fingers and pull back up. It was mostly successful. <laughs> now I am going to slide my sloth into that foliage. And it's not exactly how I lined it up to begin with, but it works. The sloth is a little bit farther down the bottom of the page which actually works to my favor when I get to the hidden journaling part. And in my hidden journaling, I just hand wrote on a scrap piece of paper or a little, it actually was a little um, lined post-it note, how I was feeling about the world right now, the events that are taking place in the world and the animosity and the anger and the hatred that so many people force upon the rest of the world and how I was so tired of feeling those feelings of frustration and anxiety and anger. And I was just 
wishing for the world to be a, a better place and wondering what I could do to make the world a better place. Outside my immediate sphere, I feel that my influence is relatively limited. So what can I do inside my sphere, inside my family and my neighborhood and my community to um, increase the desire to help each other instead of be angry at each other? That's just kind of how I was feeling today. That is why I started with a yellow background because it felt happy and sunshiny and it felt a little bit less daunting and overwhelming. Yellow is not my favorite color, but it is definitely a happy color. So now that I have the, the foliage I'm mostly in place and I can get my focal image on, I am kind of trimming things off. Some of the stems that I left on when I fussy cut, I went ahead and trimmed those off because they were unnecessary. And you can see that, that the green foliage behind the sloth really does kind of pop him up off the page. And you know, sloths are not the most adorable animals, but oh my gosh, they are so adorable. I don't know what it is about um, sloths. They're just super cute. I don't know. <laughs> They're kind of my new favorites. Sloths, sharks, and elephants. I know it's a weird combination. Okay, so I have created this little envelope out of a piece of dictionary scrap that is left over from the card I made last week. And I have, <clears throat> sorry, inserted the journaling that I wrote into that envelope and I have wrapped it up with some kind of rust colored thread. And I'm going to slide it there behind my focal image and that gauze piece. And I'm going to adhere it with a piece of foam tape so that it will be, it'll stick on. But some point in time when I want to go back and reread or when my children want to go back and reread, assuming that these journals last outlast me, um, it will be easy enough to remove without having to take apart the whole page. So this is where my hidden journaling is. And I am really, um, I like how the page turned out. Um, it's got some of the things I love, the sloth and the green. <laughs> it has some things that I needed to vent to, to get out of my system onto this page. I did decide it needed a bit of a border, so I am going to take this black archival ink and just actually I think I pulled out the potting soil I didn't want to go straight black I think or not potting soil um watering can I think this is my my gray archival ink and I'm going around the edges to kind of add that faux framing that um, color distinction that says hey put your eyes to the middle of the page and it's really funny how those subtle things make our brain do something specific I did go ahead then and pick up a this is a, um, shoot, what are those pens? Are they Copic Multiliners? No, these are my Zig pens. These are my Zig pens. And I was trying to do kind of a loose hand-drawn frame. And not all of my pens wanted to write on the Distress Spray. So that's a good thing to remember, is that with just the spray itself, without anything else on top of it, my really fine-tipped pens, my Zig pens, did not want to write on this page. So I ended up pulling out, oh my heavens, I think it's an old, old Stampin' Up, Stampin' Right marker to get, or maybe it's a Pilot or a Sharpie pen to get the, the kind of hand-drawn border on that I was going for. Um, so just something for me to put in my mental catalog is that Zig pens and Distress Oxide sprays are not best friends. They don't work together well. <laughs> But I'm just kind of drawing around the, the page. It's um, two hand-drawn lines. They are kind of on top of each other, kind of not, just there for, again, that little signal to the brain to look toward the center of the page. It kind of pulls your eyes down toward that little envelope. Here are a couple of up-close pictures so that you can see how those cutouts really kind of jump off that page with being cut out and being ink blended around the edges. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. Um, if you like this journal, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have added a video here I think you will enjoy and a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And please share this channel with anybody who you think might appreciate it. Have a great day.